and I'm one of the um, any anaesthetic assistants that will be helping today. Um, could you just tell me your name and your date of birth? Yeah, it's Jane Brown and my date of birth is the 31st of January 1999. Lovely. So I'm just going to pop some monitoring on you first, okay? So we'll first of all, we'll get your blood pressure pump on. And these three dots just go into your chest and one down your side, okay? Yeah. Hello, Hi. Hi. my name is Kim I'm the anaesthetic doctor, so I'll be doing your anaesthetic today, okay? So you can see monitoring is all up, I'll just start the blood pressure, okay? You feel like talking a bit tonight. But before we start with anything, we'll just give you some oxygen to breathe, okay? It's just a face mask with oxygen, just breathe through it. Feeling okay. I'm just going to flush this cannula to make sure that it's working. There's nothing in it, just some salty water, just to make sure that it's working, okay? Does that feel okay? some strong painkillers. This is not the stuff that gets you off to sleep yet, okay? But it might get you feeling a bit drowsy. Feeling more sleepy now? Okay. Let's start to drift you off to sleep, okay? Just keep taking those nice deep breaths that you've been taking. And think of somewhere nice. You'll be off to sleep in no time, okay? Can you open your eyes for me? I'm just going to support your chin. And the mask is going to start feeling funny, smelling funny. Easy to buy. Fine, let's have a go. 
Okay, so intubate. Which is A. Okay, the tube. Okay, the the tube. And the tube is A. Push it out, please. Push it out. How about this? My chest is moving. And the tube is missing. And we've got zero tube. So I'm happy with it, I'll just tie it in. When anaesthetizing a patient, it is important to ensure that the patient's airway is appropriately secured. There are a number of ways to do this, including endotracheal intubation, placement of a supraglottic device such as a laryngeal mask or eye gel airway, face mask ventilation, or allowing the patient to spontaneously ventilate. The choice of method will vary with the type of surgery, the position of the patient, the patient's past medical history, and the anaesthetist's preferred practice. Endotracheal intubation involves securing the airway with a cuffed tube which prevents the aspiration of gastric contents into the airways. This is the preferred method when performing laparoscopic surgery where there is raised intra-abdominal pressure and an increased risk of reflux. This can also be used in emergency surgery where the patient is not appropriately fasted and may not have an empty stomach. The patient is usually paralysed and so the anaesthetist must be prepared to manage a patient with a vulnerable airway until either the patient's paralysis wears off or the airway is secured. During laryngoscopy, there is a chance of causing damage to the teeth, the tongue and the lips and patients must be warned of this. Laryngeal mask airways are a common way of securing the airway. They are easier to insert and are the preferred method of choice in patients in cardiac arrest. Many models have a cuff and a gastric port to allow suctioning of contents coming up from the stomach. However, they do not provide the same level of security as an endotracheal tube. Patients do not require paralysis for the placement of a laryngeal mask airway, but they may aid correct positioning. All anaesthetists are required to be able to mask ventilate a patient, and this may be the preferred method of oxygenation for short cases. It can also be used as a method to pre-oxygenate the patient before the placement of a definitive airway device. So we'll prepare for our situation. Okay. She is breathing spontaneously. Jane, you open your eyes. Your operation is finished. Yeah, 
to keep her keep her here and go back until the sun squares off and then we'll yep. take her to recovery. Thank you. Laryngospasm is a protective reflex where the vocal cords go into spasm in a closed position obstructing the airway. This protective reflex stops us from inhaling perceived threats such as water or foreign bodies. If not recognised in a timely manner, this can be fatal. Laryngospasm can be triggered by instrumentation of the airway, either with an endotracheal tube or a laryngeal mask in a patient who is not deeply enough anaesthetised or paralysis has not reached peak effect. It may also be seen on extubation where the patient is waking from a deep to a wake plane and has regained some protective reflexes. Therefore, airway devices should only be removed either when the patient is deeply anaesthetised, although this risks aspiration, or preferably when the patient is awake enough to protect and maintain their own airway. It requires practice to judge the appropriate moment of extubation. If laryngospasm occurs, the anaesthetist may try to bag the patient to break the spasm of the cords, they may need to re-anaesthetise the patient to deepen the plane of anaesthesia, or they may need to re-paralyse the patient to stop the spasm. It is important to note that anaesthesia and paralysis are separate, and if you are going to paralyse a patient, they must be anaesthetised. At this point, you must begin the process of waking the patient up again from the beginning. Hello. Hi. So this is Jane, um, she's 20 years old, otherwise fit and well, came in for a left appendix done under GA. Um, very straightforward um, GA with intubation and she, her numbers are all fine throughout the procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, straightforward operation as well, but she developed a laryngospasm at uh, extubation, so yeah. we had to re-paralyse her. Um, she had some um, IV morphine, um, so just take note that she's breathing okay. Mm -hmm. She's extubated and maintaining her own airway, looks, to, looks fine to me, I think she will wake up okay. Um, I can hear a little bit of snoring. Are you happy with the airway? Yeah, we can just do a bit of chin lift and see how she is. Yeah, that's better now, isn't it? Okay, yeah. do you want me to take over yes, just please. until she wakes a bit more? Yeah, that'll be a good idea. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, Jane, I'm just holding your chin there. Yeah, I'm happy. Thank you. All right. After a patient has been woken from anaesthesia, they are transferred to the care of the recovery team. While in recovery, the team assess to make sure that the patient continues to wake as appropriate, has adequate analgesia on board, any nausea and vomiting is under control, and there are no immediate sequelae of surgery occurring. Recovery nurses may have to use airway manoeuvres or simple adjuncts to maintain a patient's airway after anaesthesia, as they may have residual drowsiness as a result of their anaesthetic. However, you would expect this to improve the longer the patient is out of theatre and the patient should be maintaining their own airway by the time they leave recovery. Recovery nurses also have experience in managing analgesia. In recovery, patient-controlled analgesia or nurse-controlled analgesia pumps may be initiated. If the recovery nurses are concerned about the progress a patient is making, the responsible anaesthetist must be available to review the patient in recovery when requested. Well, I'm not happy. Her oxygen saturation levels are dropping. Yeah, she seems really sleepy. Try a draw first. Okay, Jane, I'm just going to support your jaw here. Yeah, I think I'll go get help. Thank you. Hello. Oh, so the stats are not great. Yeah. Mm. Did you enjoy that? Let me take over the jaw first and get the endo back, please. Let's take this off and put on the endo back instead, okay? Can you back for me? Okay, still not bagging great. Let's try Goodell. Okay. Let's back again. Some improvement. Okay. 
Okay, I think let's try an eye gel. with the airway just now but we need to work out why she's still not waking up so I'll call the duty consultant okay uh, are you happy with the eye gel and just helping with the bagging absolutely well I'll go and get the consultant yeah that's okay problem. thank you there are many reasons why a patient may fail to wake as expected in recovery drugs such as benzodiazepines or opiates can suppress consciousness fluctuations in blood pressure may precipitate a stroke People with diabetes may experience hypoglycemia due to prolonged fasting or stress. The type of surgery or position may cause cerebral edema. On reviewing a patient in an emergency situation, the ABCDE framework can be helpful to assess the patient, identify the most immediately life-threatening problems and allow time for intervention. If a patient shows signs of airway obstruction, look in the mouth for any obvious foreign body. Assess the patient's respiratory pattern for signs of obstruction such as seesaw breathing and feel for airflow on the cheek. You can also listen for additional sounds such as strider or snoring, which may indicate a partially obstructed airway. However, a fully obstructed airway will be silent. Maneuvers such as a head tilt chin lift may be enough to clear an obstructed airway, but a jaw thrust has the added benefit of being particularly stimulating, allowing you to assess a response to pain as well as clearing the airway. Assess for improvement in the effort of breathing to ensure your intervention is adequate. If not, consider the use of an adjunct such as a nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal airway to aid face mask ventilation. If a patient is deeply unconscious, securing their airway with an eye gel airway may allow for better ventilation. Do not intubate a patient unless you have been trained to do so. Responsibility for and troubleshooting of airway problems in anaesthetised patients is a skill learned at postgraduate level by anaesthetic trainees. However, airway problems can arise in any critically unwell patient on any ward, so it would be beneficial to familiarise yourself with skills such as airway assessment and simple interventions such as head tilt, chin lift, jaw thrust, and the use of adjuncts such as oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airways.